people can believe in change and when people believe in loss, change can happen. My name is Adrian Singba and I share hope. Welcome to I Share Hope, the podcast where world leaders share their real stories of hope and how you can use actionable hope to start changing your life today. And now, here's your host, Chris Williams. Hello, Adrian. Adrian Timba, Chris Williams. I Share Hope, how are you? Hi, Chris. Good morning, how are you? I'm doing well. Is this still a good time to talk? Wow, you called right on the dot. Impressive. (laughs) <laughs> I try. I know your time is valuable. I really appreciate you spending some time with us. So where are you right now? It looks like a U.S. number. Yeah, I'm in the U.S. in um, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. You live in Pennsylvania full time? Yeah, um, I go to school here. Temple. Okay. You heard of Temple? Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Are you yeah. from Liberia, though? Or are you... Telling the story of Liberia. Like it says you're a Liberian blogger. Yeah, I am. The global blog. So so are you my work is focused on Liberia. Okay. Are you from Liberia, born and raised there? Yeah, um, I moved there in two thousand five. Great. So yeah, most and then I've been visiting at least like once a year since then. Okay. Your accent is almost non-existent. I'm amazed. Really? Yeah, you I sound... Say it, it comes out when it, when it wants. <laughs> <laughs> comes out when you're really mad? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It just depends who I'm talking to. Oh, right, that makes sense. Yeah, I get that. That's great. So you're using... If I get this right, you're using your, your blogging skills... Um, for lack of a better way to say it, but you're telling the story of real Liberians and how Liberia is changing and moving and growing as a country, both good and bad, um, and yeah. just bringing a lot of awareness. I've been looking at what you're doing, and you're you're really telling a story, which I think is so fun because it connects, Thank but you. you're actually getting something done with it too, which is really great. Thank you. Yeah, I just started this uh, a year ago, and at first it was just you know my reflection on issues in Liberia, but then it's kind of growing and I'm kind of allowing other people to share their stories too on it, just to kind of be that platform for people to get their works out there and to kind of, you know, just so people know what like what Liberians are really thinking about Liberia and how they really feel um, about Liberia. That's really interesting. I, I wish I could just see yeah. the, the data behind your site, just because I'm curious who actually... <laughs> Who's driven to find out more about Liberia? I know if it's in the news, I'm sure you get an influx of people from all over. But mm-hmm. when it's quiet in the media, I'm assuming it's more Liberians. There's a lot of traffic from Liberia or surrounding countries. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Most of the traffic definitely comes from Liberia because um, the, the site is solely focused on Liberia. Yeah. Eventually, I'll try to make it Pan-African. I feel like right now there's so many different Pan-African things going on and yeah. That many is just focused on like Liberia itself. So yeah. I kinda of wanna reach out the Liberian story with it. That makes sense. I yeah, thank you. I think it's great. Great idea. So what year in school are you? How much more do you have? Uh, it's my last semester actually. Just a few more weeks. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Good for you. And then what are you doing after this? I know. Um, I'm going to just kind of work here a little bit maybe for a year and then uh i plan to move to like Syria. wow um so i just want to kind of beef up my resume a little bit while i'm here and what's your major in criminal justice with a track of journalism say it one more time i didn't hear the first part i heard journalism criminal justice criminal but, justice like on the journalism track yeah wow good for you that's great congratulations yeah. i know you've worked hard to get there that's great I, I have. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad it's ready to be done. I bet. Yeah. I remember that feeling. It's a great feeling to be done. <laughs> but summer vacations go away and long winter breaks go away. And I don't know. There's some goods and bad stuff. I know. Yeah. I'm going to make it, I'm sure. But for yeah. now, I just want to be done. Yeah. We're good. All right. Well, you have <laughs> classes to get to, I'm sure, and studying and all the fun things that students get yeah. to do before they graduate. 
So let me ask you yeah. these five questions. So we're asking a thousand liters of hope from all over the globe, trying to get a true cross section of global population based on some UN stats and a few other sources. We're asking the same five questions about hope, just trying to get a handle on how people are experiencing hope, using hope and harnessing hope's power, for lack of a better way to say it, to, to create change, sustainable change in their communities. So. Let me ask you these questions, and this is about you, not me. So you just answer however you want. Okay, sounds good. All right, thanks. Okay, so question one: What's your favorite quote, or your favorite definition, or, or your belief about hope? Um, I don't really have a quote on it, but I believe that um, hope is what kind of gets you know, like it's more powerful than anything else, really, because that gets people out of any any given situation. Um, it's that little tinge of like a scared ass that kind of gets people going and gets people um, believing that hmm. there's better days there's better days ahead and that you know the situation is not gonna last forever. Yeah, well said, well said. I like that. So. Question two then is who has shared the most hope with you? Who's who's really instilled that into your life? Um, I'm gonna say my mother definitely because um, I lived in I actually lived in Liberia during the during the Civil War and like living with my family, living with my mom. Like I just always like she tried to keep me shielded from everything that was really going on. So I, I just always felt like, okay, things are going to get better because I was always told that, you know, things are going to get better. And I feel like that's the, the nature of Liberians as a whole. Um, we're just always thinking of going to get better and things are going to get better. So um, I'm definitely going to credit my mother to being the person that um, instilled that, that overall value that things will always get better. It's a great quality to have. Sounds like a great lady. So is she, she in the is. States? She is she in the States with you? No, um, she lives in Liberia. Wow. She works there too. Okay. Yeah. Most of my life is still in like, Okay. I'm the only one here. I bet you are looking forward to getting home when you can. That's great. Yeah, definitely. Question three. Tell us a story, kind of take us back to a time when you have experienced something that's really required you to lean on that hope that you have. How'd you get through it? Okay. Um, I came when I really believed in hope. Well, it would be, um, like, it would definitely be post-war um, Liberia. Initially, I was, I was very young. Um, I was about nine years old at, at the time when there were talks about, you know, getting a new president and everything like that. Um, our current president, actually, Ellen Fairleaf. And I feel like at that moment, um, along with a lot of other Liberians, I just felt like, you know, that was, you know, that was that moment. That was our point of no return, and that was going to be the moment that, kind of solidified our growth and our progress. So I feel like at that that moment was when I just really felt like um a lot of hope in, you know, in 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 the country and in our ability to just not revert to, you know, that conflict and that crisis level. Um since then it's kind of been, you know, wavy, like wavering, I guess. Uh, because of, you know, a down by it. But overall, I think that moment kind of put that light in me to kind of believe that, you know, um, people can create change um, and people can believe in change. And when people believe in us, change can happen. Great example. Great example. A, a unique one, too, seen through the eyes of a child at a really in a really adult situation. Um, it was, but, you know, we had to grow up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the adult situation yeah. that's impacting every child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Great story. So 
How are you then? So you're 22, you're in school and you're almost wrapping it up. Your family's back in Liberia. You're here in the States and obviously thriving and doing well at it. How are you sharing hope on a daily basis with people around you? Um, on a daily basis, I just try to, like, well, mostly my blog, um, I'm going to say, because with my blog, I try to, like, with every story, even if I'm talking about, you know, our shortcomings or the shortcomings of leaders or anything like that, I try to still kind of buy it into people to try to, um, to try to get them to see other another side to it. Yeah, you know, these things are happening. But at the end of the day, it's nobody's responsibility to fix it. Um, it's everyone's responsibility. And I feel like I try to live that even with my friends. Um, I'm the person everyone comes to to kind of get their spirits up. Um, I'm the person that everyone comes to when they when they feel like you know they need that second opinion about things. And I just feel like I try to kind of keep that going um, in my life to just offer different sides of the spectrum all the time and people can understand that, you know, looking at it in one negative way is not really going to lead to a solution. And the end goal is to always kind of find a solution. So, yeah, definitely with my blog and just, just my conversations with people, I try to kind of keep that, that belief going. You sound like a great neighbor, great friend. <laughs> I try. <laughs> we all need somebody like that in our lives to kind of point us back to a, exactly. a, a more sane direction for our brains to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Exactly. Question five, and I just can't wait to hear you answer these because this is a fun one. It's really practical. What are the okay. the simple A, B, C steps or one, two, threes that, that I and everybody listening in with us can use to to really move forward with hope, sharing it with someone or growing on our own? What are the easiest things we can do right when we get done uh, listening to this podcast? Um, the ABC story, like, I think hope is actually harder to have than um, it might seem because there's many times where you're going to be let down. Um, so I think on to that belief is, is very, very important, um, especially when when you feel let down, especially. Because there are many times when you feel like, oh, you know, why, what am I even trying to move back to Liberia for? You know, at the end of the day, not much is going to change. And moments like that is when you really, really need to kind of harness that, you know, that, um, that fire that you have to kind of keep going and keep believing. But the ABCs, um, I think it's just that having that really strong passion or belief for, you know, what it is you're, you're hoping for. Um, if you're passionate about it, even if it's, you know, saying that your dreams come true or hoping that, you know, whatever the situation is, I think kind of coupling that with passion and that um, love for whatever it is can really keep you going because that passion and that love, um, it's going to keep you going even when you're let down and you're disappointed where hope becomes vulnerable and where you can lose that hope. But if you have that love and that passion for whatever it is that you're hoping in or that you're hoping for, um, I think it can really keep you going a long way. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, not everybody mentions the vulnerability of hope, but it is really vulnerable. You're right. And there there has to be something that's underpinning that hope. Um, that, mm -hmm. that when the hope does get scared and runs back into the shadows, that it can, it can come back out and know there's a safe place to hope. That's a really important piece. Hmm. Okay. That's well said. Nicely done. So that is our five questions. You've, why did you choose criminal justice? That's that's question number six. <laughs> criminal okay. justice and journalism. Initially, I get the journalism. Yeah, no, initially um, I wasn't on the journalism track. I kind of knew I wanted to do something, you know, that would bring change. So I wanted to go into humanitarian law in my beer because, you know, it's just a big need for it. Um, mm. 
human rights human rights violation that goes on in Liberia within the criminal justice system. Mm-hmm. So I, I decided to go that route. But then as, you know, I was in college and I started growing, I developed um like a love for writing. Mm-hmm. So I kinda want to incorporate this through investigative journalism to kind of just bring up bring like showcase or highlight the things that are going on. So maybe I can inspire other people to one that, you know, do the things I initially wanted to do. Hmm. Um, so if I can bring, you know, highlight these stories of the human, human rights violations that's going on or stories of, you know, child abuse or everything that's going on within the nation, um, if I can bring light to these things, then other people can be the ones to actually work on it. So, yeah. Nice. That's what I've decided. But initially, um, now I'm not really as criminal justice as I was because I don't want to go into law anymore. But that was the initial plan, and that's how criminal justice comes in. Hmm. Great. That's a good. That's a good plan. Yeah. It's a good path. And how did you end up Thank getting you. to come to the states for your education? Is that is that a common thing from Liberia, or is that unusual? Um, it's actually common, but uh, you have to have some. That sent for you. But my my father um, initially lived here. He since moved back to Liberia to work, mm-hmm. but he initially lived here, and then he sent for me as like an immigrant. Okay. Um. So that's how I got to come here. But that's like a dream, like in Liberia, coming to America, and then everything's supposedly gonna get better. We're gonna have better opportunities. So a lot of people try to have their kids come over here, um, okay. and, and try to come over here themselves just to provide for their families. And, Sure. Yeah, that's that makes sense. I understand that. I'm glad you're here for now. I know we're not going to be able to keep you forever, but I'm glad you're here for now. I am too. Thank you. I don't think my experience, if I didn't experience the things I have here, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't really be doing the things I'm doing right now. So hmm. I'm definitely grateful to my experiences here. All right. It sounds like there's lots of people around you who are grateful for you being here too. Well done. Okay. So, do this for me. We uh, we kind of intro each podcast with uh, a quote from you. So your name and I share hope. So I would say if it was me as the guest, I'd say I'm Chris Williams and I share hope. Um, but I'm going to mute my microphone. You can just say your name and I share hope. Okay. Um, you. Yeah, go for it whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, my name is Adrian Singba and I share hope. Nice. Great job, Adrian. Okay, thank you thank again you. for your time. This? Say what? Or how can I hear hear the interview or like post a link or something? Yeah, like great. And and I wanted to ask you the same thing. I want to know first, I'll tell you the answer to your question second, but first, how can people follow you? So if I get this right, your blog is the the quadrilateral guess, is that right? No. No, I'm is I'm reading it wrong. The Qua- yeah, okay. I'm, I'm sitting here reading it. I've got it pulled up and I'm going to the, the web address, but it's not pulling up right. Okay. So T H E C O L L O Q A D I A L O G U E S dot com. Did I get that right? The Coloqua Dialogues dot com. Yes. That's correct. So, so um, once you under my my social media stuff, um, our link. Yeah. Uh, um, that's a, that'll be the best way because if you can follow me through the blog, uh-huh. um, I can better, you know, I'm more accessible that way. So there's a act, um, form on the blog. Once you visit, you can fill it out and then it will always be emailed to me. Okay. Um, so there's, there's also that. But it's zadkolokwa.com, yeah. Okay, great. So the blog is better than and hitting you up on social on, media. On, on Facebook. It will be the, the Kolokwa Dialogue on Facebook and on Instagram, the Kolokwa Dialogue. Awesome. So a lot of people listen to this while they're out running or in the store or something where they're mobile. So what we're going to do is we'll put this on ishareHope.com for everybody who's listening. ishareHope.com and under the interviews tab, we'll have Adrian's interview and all of the show notes, her answers to the questions, the links to where you can find her, all that stuff will be there in the uh, interview tab at ishareHope.com under Adrian's interview. So make sure you go there and we can link it up to... To Adrian's info. Oh. Okay. And so when, when will it be up today? Yeah, no, here's how this works. So we're obviously interviewing a thousand people, which 
is a lot, but we have a lot of people that we're getting to talk to and we're, we're way ahead. So we're trying to release these on a weekly basis. So okay. it'll be, it'll be a several months. I know that sounds like a long time, but it'll be several months before this interview comes out because we want to make okay. sure we're a sustainable resource for people who are wanting to engage with the topic. So we're releasing one a week. So we stay steady and don't mm -hmm. have big gaps back and forth. Um, but I will do okay. this for sure. We will reach out to you as soon as it's going live. That way you can share it. You can check it out and then we'll be sharing it on our social media. It's all free. And, um, so glad you're, you're helping us out with our little research project. Awesome. It was a pleasure. And I think it's wonderful, you know, kind of bring in light to light and how it plays in, in people's lives and stuff. So it's wonderful. It does. Thank you. You're the it's one who makes it wonderful. Being a part of it. I'm so glad you are. All right. Have a great day. You too. Thank All right. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've just listened to I Share Hope. If you're ready to make a change, head to our website at iSharehope.com and claim your free copy of the top 10 actions of hope from world leaders to use hope in your own life. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.